So I wanted to show you what's going on in this regard in terms of the fiscal situation in Washington. And the Nebraska model would be a, a good lesson, I think, for the rest of the country. <coughs> Get on this side of it. This year's budget is actually $3.6 trillion. That's what will be spent. It's your money, and this is where it is spent. It's divided up into some basic categories here. On the right is what we call discretionary spending, this blue area of the pie chart here. And that's divided into two categories, defense and non-defense. Defense, that's clear, that's about 20% of the overall budget. Non-defense discretionary is basically everything the government does. Roads, parks, education, other than the social safety support systems that are out there. Those are called mandatory spending programs. Discretionary is because Congress has discretion over it. Mandatory, the, the law, the way it is written, is it just the money moves out based upon whatever the demand is. Social Security, that's 21% of the overall budget. Medicare is 16%. Medicaid is 7%, other <coughs> mandatory programs, certain federal benefits, supplemental security income for disabled are another 13%. Net interest on the debt, the yellow area there, is actually 6% of the overall budget. Now this is where the money comes from, but remember that first figure, 3.6 trillion. Federal revenues come from various sources, the largest being the individual income tax, and federal revenues this year were 2.5 trillion. So, Quick, simple math, 3.6 minus 2.5. That's called a budget deficit of over a trillion dollars. The individual income tax is about 50% of the money coming to the federal government. This is the blue area of the pie chart here. Now, it's interesting to statistic that about 50% of all Americans don't pay any individual income tax. Now, however, anybody working is going to pay the payroll tax. That's the orange area here. That's 35%. Corporate income taxes are 10%, the gold area. Estate and excise taxes are about 9% for the balance of the receipts to the federal government. So how did we get in this situation? And this is a historic look at spending across the last 10 years and its consequences, 20 years. In 1990, on the upper left hand up there, the spending was $1.25 trillion, $1.8 trillion in 2000, and has now basically doubled in the last 10 years to 3.6. Size of the federal government has doubled in the last 10 years or so. In 1990, there was a deficit of 200 billion. In the year 2000, a surplus of over 200 billion. And this year, it's a 1.1 trillion dollar deficit. Year after year of deficit spendings leads to a pile of debt. And the debt was about 3 trillion in 90, about 6 trillion in 2000. Now we're at 16 trillion. Now I'll put this up here because this is important for everybody to know. That's basically the size of the overall output in the economy of the economy in the United States. And that is a real red flag. That's the situation that Greece, for instance, finds itself in. Now, we're not Greece. We have a large, resilient economy, and we have a government structure in which we can prudentially deal with this if there's the will, unlike in many other places. But this has significant, it causes significant problems, not only in terms of economic security, but even national security. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? Well, debt is a form of taxation that's just hidden from you all. But it also causes other problems, and that it is a future form of taxation on children and grandchildren who have to pay off this bond indebtedness. That's a gross injustice. Secondly, it is a movement of the assets of the country into the hands of foreign debt holders. Uh, some, and that debt, some of which is held by foreign entities such as China, which officially holds about a trillion dollars of the debt. Unofficially, it's perhaps closer to two trillion. Now, a member of Congress and a young member from Georgia, who's from a rural area, was telling me that a Chinese investor was down in his area looking to buy 10,000 acres of land, ag land. That's the consequence of moving debt into the hands of people outside of the country. It's, it's just real. So it ends up being a shift of the assets of the country in the hands of, of others. The other problem with that is if you think about it, for instance, with the country of China, we've sent a lot of manufacturing over there. They make the stuff, we buy the stuff. Try going a week without something made in China. They have the cash, we run up debt, they buy the cash. It is a very dysfunctional marriage here. 